Welcome to the session number 9 of the Semantic Manager training series. In this tutorial, we will learn how to make a motor block to control the motor. In the session number 8, we have written the logic to run the motor in the forward and the reverse direction for only one motor. Let's assume that we have to write the logic to control 20 motors. Then we have to write the logic separately for these 20 motors, which is quite a lot of work to do. And after writing the logic, we have to manage it also. What if, if we can make a control block for the motor once and reuse the same block for each of these 20 motors? This way, there is no need to write the logic for these motors separately. To achieve this, we have to use the function block to make a control block for the motor. Before going further into this session, I would like you guys to please subscribe this channel and press the bell icon for more upcoming videos. First of all, we will go back to the Somatic Manager project for the last session and insert a new function block. We can set the language as the ladder logic for this block. We will double click on this block to open it. Here you can see that we can create inputs, outputs, static and temp tags for this block. We will create input tags for this motor control block which includes motor forward push button, motor reverse push button, stop push button and overload input. Next we will create outputs tag for this motor control block which include motor forward command and motor reverse command. Next, we make the logic to start and stop the motor in reverse and forward direction in the motor control block. Same as we did in the last training session. In case if you have missed the session, you can have a look on it. The video link is in the description box. After creating the logic in this block, we will close this block and go back to the program blocks. Here we can name this FB1 block as motor control block. Next, we will open the OB1 block. In this block, if we expand the FB block menu, here you can find the FB1 motor control block. We can drag and drop this block on the network 1. As you can see that the motor block is created here. We can enter the inputs and outputs addresses for the motor 1 block. Next, we have to enter the DB addresses for this block. We can enter this DB10 and press the enter button. It will create an instance data block for this motor control block. So this network number one is responsible for controlling the motor number one. We will create another network and drag and drop FB1 control block. Next, we have to enter the DB address for this block. We can enter this DB as DB11 and press the enter button. So this network number 2 is responsible for controlling motor number 2. Next we will enter the inputs and outputs addresses for the push buttons, contactors responsible for controlling the motor 2. Next we can insert a new network to control the motor number 3. We can use this block as many times we need. Now we can close the OB1 block and goes back to the program blocks. Here you can see the instance data block for the motor control blocks used in the OB1. If we open the DB10 here, you can see all tags used in the motor block. This can be monitored when the PLC is in the run mode and can be handy while troubleshooting the logic. Let's download this program in the PLC and see how does it performs. As you can see that if we press I0.0 .0 button once, it will turn on the output Q0.0 .0 to run the motor number one in the forward direction. As we press the start push button I0.2 once, it turns off the output Q0.0 .0 of the PLC. As we press the I0.1 button once, 
it will turn on the output Q0.1 to run the motor number 1 in the reverse direction. And the same as we press the start push button I0.2 once, it turns off the Q0.1 output of the PLC and motor stops. Now let's try to run the motor number 2. As you can see that if we press the I0.4 button once, it will turn on the output Q0.2 to run the motor number 2 in the forward direction. As we press the start push button I0.6 once, it turns off the Q0.2 output of the PLC. I0.5 button once, it will turn on the output Q0.3 to run the motor number 2 in the reverse direction. As we press the star push button I0.6, once it turns off the Q0.3 output of the PLC and motor 2 stops. So this is how to make a motor control block. I hope you like it. Till next time, take care. Goodbye.